In this lesson, we're going to do an example of a dihybrid cross. So when we're doing a dihybrid cross, it's similar to Punnett squares you maybe have done before, but rather than tracking just one trait, we're going to be tracking two traits. Uh, dihybrid crosses relate to the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment, if you're familiar with those. So we're going to do one example of a dihybrid cross. So I just kind of made this example up. Um, we're going to be doing an example here with butterflies. So we're going to start with two parent butterflies. The traits that we're going to be tracking in this dihybrid cross are going to be body color and wings. So if we take a look, we're going to cross one parent who has a pink body with spots on the wings and a parent who has a white body with no spots. So those are the two traits we're tracking right now. Both of these parents are purebred parents, meaning that for both traits, they are homozygous dominant. So you can see one parent has big P, big P, big S, big S, and the other parent is little P, little P, little S, little S. The, the P's are going to stand for the body. So the big P is the dominant trait, which is going to represent a pink body, and the big S is the dominant trait, which is going to represent it having spots on its wings. Whereas the little P is a recessive trait representing a white body, and little S is the recessive trait representing no spots. So if we were to figure out the possible gametes for each of these parents, for the first butterfly right here, all of our possible gametes are going to be a big P, big S. And how we figure that out is if you take a look up here, if we were to cross each of these, no matter what way we do our crosses, we're going to end up with a big P and a big S. And we did the same thing over here. If we cross each of these, no matter which way we do our cross, it's always going to come out little p, little s. Okay, so our possible gametes, big p, big s, and little p, little s. So moving on to the next step is figuring out our F1 generation. So from those possible gametes we just used, we can find that our first generation, we're going to have a big p, little p, big s, little s. And we're going to cross that with a big p, big p, big s, little s. Okay. And the way that we figured that out, using those gametes we just had, we basically just crossed them. So we took this big P, crossed it with this little P, big S with this little S. Okay? And that's how we end up with what we have right here. So if we're crossing them, we can figure out what the possible gametes for each of those parents is going to be. So if we look down here, one possible gamete will be big P, big S, big P, little s, little p, big s, and little p, little s. And because both of these are the same, the possible gametes are going to be the same for both. And then we just go ahead and set up our Punnett square. So similar to the Punnett squares, um, if you're familiar with doing a monohybrid cross, we just have some, a little bit of extra room in here because we're crossing two traits instead of one. So if we were to go ahead, we would write the possible gametes that we just figured out right here along one side, and then these ones will go along this side. And we'll just go ahead and cross those like a regular Punnett square. So we take our big P and our big P, big S, big S. So just like a monohybrid cross, you're taking what you have along the top and crossing it with what you have along the side. Big P, big P and big S, little s. And we'll go ahead and do that all the way through. So now that we have that all figured out, here's what our cross looks like. So we have our genotypes of all of our potential offspring in our cross right here. Remember the genotypes are what we use the genes to represent. So we have all of our different alleles and those are what we call our genotypes 
in our cross. So we can take a look at what we have and try and figure out what our phenotypes would be. The phenotypes are the physical appearance. So if we look through, we can find out how many butterflies would have a pink body with spots. So if you think back to the beginning, pink body is the dominant trait represented by the big P's, and the spots are also a dominant trait represented by the big S's. So if you go through and count, you would find that we would have nine butterflies that would have a pink body with spots. And then we can find out how many would have a pink body with no spots. So remember the pink body is the dominant trait represented by the big P. No spots would be the little s's. So if you go through, we would find that we would have three that would have that phenotype. Then the next one is the white body with no spots. White body and no spots are both recessive traits, so we would need to have little p, little p, little s, little s. And we would have three of those. And then lastly, we would look for how many would have a white body with no spots, and we would have one of those. Okay? So our ratio, our phenotypic ratio, would be 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. And this is kind of a standard ratio if you were doing this kind of cross starting with purebred parents. So you can do a dihybrid cross um, and have different outcomes depending on what you're starting out with with the parents.